given everything that people have been through in the past several years, that survey after survey, survey continue to show that the overwhelming majority of Americans still aspire to home ownership. Most Americans still rank home ownership as an important part of their view of the American dream. But as you look deeper in those surveys, you'll see that much of the value that an American places on owning a home is emotional, not financial. Take, for example, the recent, most recent Fannie Mae housing survey. The top two reasons for home ownership were to have a good place to raise children and a safe place to live. As a just democratic society, we all are citizens a safe, good place to live. But a roof over one's head doesn't always have to come with a mortgage. In some cases, it shouldn't come with that. Home ownership is valuable, there's not a question. It stabilizes the community and leads to more civic engagement and investment. Those things have been proven over time. For those who purchase a home for a place to live and make long-term payments, a home can also be provide a vehicle for wealth creation. It's important to recognize that much of the value created during the housing bu bubble in the mid-2000s was more the result of expanding credit and over-borrowing and over-lending than it was from underlying home value appreciation on the fundamentals. So think about it. Historically, a long-term average of home appreciation going back to 1975 is 4.6%, and that includes the recent bubble in burst years. Since 2001, the average appreciation has been all 2%. So leading up to the crisis, the virtues of home ownership, stability, security, and savings got disconnected in the 2000s from the act of home ownership. The laudable goals of a ownership society evolved from building long-term equity to cashing in on short-term gains. In many cases, it became less about a safe place to live and more about making profits. Home purchases for investment gains and not for shelter increased from a historical average about 4% to 28% in 2006. Homeowners heavily leveraged in their home became the norm. Cash out refinances, so using the money for other things other than improving the home or developing the home, completely disconnected the positive aspects of homing, owning a home from its value. According to Freddie Mac report, for eight consecutive quarters at the height of the crisis in 2005, or height of the buildup in 2005, the cash out refinances exceeded 80% of all the refinancing. So a question we need to consider and policymakers to consider is that if people are going to take cash out of a home or speculate in a home and buy for investment or buy multiple properties to rent as an investment, should they be able to do so with mortgage capital, especially mortgage capitals guaranteed by the government? We need to look hard at some of these old assumptions and ask the question of home ownership as a right solution for everyone. Is there more value, more flexible housing options? We also have to challenge the assumption of stability versus mobility and other factors that affect us, two-income households, changes in family structure, all the things that have become a part of our modern society. Workforce mobility and flexibility is increasingly important to people in America to counter potential income shocks, locational decisions about where to work, and this is the case in the last recession, has been the case up until today. According to some of Karen's research that she's found, the volatility of household income rose nearly 30 percent in the past four decades. In addition to these realities, the past five years of high unemployment and underwater home values have taught us that sometimes flexibility for workers and people to move and not be burdened by a mortgage is a virtue. A 30-year mortgage contract does not provide flexibility in some cases. So we have to challenge the assumptions about the flexibility and mobility of the American people relative to the housing, uh, housing and mortgage finance. 